بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Today is the blessed day of the Wilada of Amir al Mu'mineen, sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi, where the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Wulid al yawm lana mawludun yaftahullahu bihi alayna abwab al rahmah. That today a blessed birth or a blessed child is born. And because of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the gates of mercy upon us. He said this on the day of the wilada of Amir al Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, who was born inside the holy Kaaba. According to the ahadith, Fatima bint Asad, she went to the Kaaba when she felt the pain of delivery. And she raised her head and she said, Ya Allah, O Lord, in al bayta baytuk. The house is your house, and I am your servant, Amatuk. So, Ya Allah, ease this delivery for me. And that's when Quraysh was sitting down there, and they saw the wall of the Kaaba open, and she went inside, and the walls closed. Now, this dua of Fatima bint Asad shows us that she was a muwahida. She was a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She believed in Allah. And she knew that the child that she was bearing was not an ordinary child. This is just like Khadija alayhi salam when she was carrying Fatima salamullahi alayha. One day the Prophet came to see Khadija when she was pregnant with Fatima alayhi salam. He saw her speaking to somebody. He looked around, he said, Khadija, who are you speaking with? Nobody is in the room. She said, this child... This child in, one, in my womb, it speaks to me. And I have a conversation with, it, with her. So similarly, Khadija realized that she was carrying a child who was not an ordinary child. Fatima, salamullahi alayha bint Asad, also realized that she was not carrying an ordinary child. She came to the Kaaba. And indeed, for three days, she is resting in the Kaaba. Abu Talib was called. He said, come, see your wife. He came, he brought the keys of the Kaaba. They tried to unlock the keys, the door. They couldn't. They realized. That's when he said to them, he said to them, he said, she is being taken care of in, in there. She's being taken care of. This is a proof that he was a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he realized that she's being taken care of, well, who would take care of her? He knew what was going on, what was happening. And he waited for three days, and then the walls open again. She comes out carrying this child, this nur, this light. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam comes and hugs him and takes him from that day and brings him up to become the man who says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam taught me, he raised me, and I was with him like his shadow. Never let him. Until the day he left this world, when he was on my chest, and I was carrying him. 
So this is Amir al-Mu'mineen Salamullah alayh in the wilada, on the birth, in the birth. This blessed day, the 13th day of Rajab. This man, let's take a look at some of his characteristics and some of his attributes. And then let's see what are his Shia like, his followers. There is a hadith that is narrated by many Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in this ayah in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is surah, uh, verse number 7 of Surah Al-Bayyinah. Surah Al-Bayyinah in the 30th juz. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Indeed, those who believe and do good deeds, they are the best of God's creation. There is a mufassir by the name of As-Siyuti. He is not a Shia. In fact, he is one of the biggest mufassirin of our brothers. He has a tafsir called ad durr al-Manthur. He narrates this hadith with this ayah. Refer to this ayah. See what he says. He says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was sitting down one day and Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam came. He pointed at him and he said, Him, wallathi nafsi biyadih. I swear by the one who has my soul. He and his Shia, he uses the word Shia. Huwa wa Shia'atuhu humu al-fa'izun aw hum khayru al-bariyya. هو وشيعته خير البرية. Him and his Shia are the best of Allah's creation. And then they said the ayah was revealed. This ayah was revealed after this prophet said this hadith. And this is narrated by a Durr al-Manthur, al-Siyuti. He mentions this hadith. In another hadith that is narrated in several versions, we will take the version that is narrated by Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. In his Musnad, Imam of the Hanbali right. What does he say? He says, one day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa was sitting with some of his companions. And this is what he said. Man arada an yandura ila Adam fi ilmih. If one wants to look at Adam and the knowledge of Adam. And I'll come to this, the knowledge of Adam. وَإِلَىٰ نُوحٍ فِي فِهْمِهِ And Nuh and his understanding. وَإِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي خُلُقِهِ And if one wants to see Ibrahim and his manners, the manners of Ibrahim. So the ilm, the knowledge of Adam, the understanding of Nuh, alayhi salam, the manners of Ibrahim, what else? وَإِلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ فِي مُنَاجَاتِهِ And to Musa and the way he used to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he used to have the munajat, the private conversation with Allah. What else? وَإِلَىٰ عِيسَىٰ فِي سُنَّتِهِ And to the tradition of Isa alayhi salam. How Isa used to live his life. What was the tradition of, the, of Isa alayhi salam? What else? وَإِلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلُّوا عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ وَإِلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ فِي تَمَامِهِ وَكَمَالِهِ And to Muhammad with his perfection and his completion. بَلَغَ الْعُلَىٰ بِكَمَالِهِ كَشَفَ الدُّجَىٰ بِجَمَالِهِ حَسُنَ الْجَمِيعُ خِصَالِهِ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ صَلُّوا عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ This is the, the, the poetry about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, he stated he reached the perfection through his completion. He was completed. He's perfect. So, he said, whomever wants to look at all these characteristics. So, the knowledge of Adam Alayhi Salam, the understanding of Nuh Alayhi Salam, the manners of Ibrahim, the munajat of Musa, the tradition of Isa Alayhi Salam, the perfection and the completion of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa He said, let him look at the person who's going to come right from this angle, from this place. 
He said, so the people then started sitting like this. You know, everybody raised their, their heads. They wanted to see who is that person. And to nobody's surprise, it was none other than Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu who came walking, and everybody said, well, this is the man. This is interesting. When we read Ziyarat Warith, we say, Assalamu alayka ya Waritha Nuhin Nabiyillah. Assalamu alayka ya Waritha Ibrahim Khalilillah. You know, Warith means the inheritor. You inherited something. So we say, Assalamu alayka, peace be upon you, ya Aba Abdullah. You inherited Nuh alayhi salam. Okay? And we say, Assalamu alayka ya waritha Musa, kalim Allah. Ya waritha Isa, ruh Allah. Ya waritha Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ya waritha Muhammadin, Habib. And so on and so forth. What did they inherit? You know, it's interesting. Did we ask ourselves, what did they inherit? Well, this hadith helps us to understand some of this inheritance. What did they inherit from these individuals? Because the imams, alayhim salam are all one nur, one light. One nur. Let us take a look at this hadith a little bit. He says in the hadith that Amir al Mu'mineen inherited the ilm of Adam. Now, what is the ilm of Adam? Let us turn to the Quran. See, the Quran has our answers. If we turn to the ayah where Allah is talking about the creation of Adam, after Allah speaks of, about the creation of Adam, he says, وَعَلَّمَ This is Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 31. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught Adam, Allah taught Adam, all the names. Imam al-Sadiq was asked, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, what are all these names? He said he taught him everything. The names of everything. You see a mountain. What is that? What do you call a mountain? What is it? You tell this is a mountain. You see, for example, water. What is that? This is water. So he, told, he taught him all these names. Everything he sees, he knows what it is. He's got that knowledge. Not only this. Imam al-Sadiq then continues in the hadith. He says he even, you see even this sajada, this, this uh, the... The mat, the mat on which I'm sitting on, not mat, you know, this is a rug. Don't, don't make say mat, you know. The rug, the rug on which, on which he was sitting on, he says, you see even this rug? He said, yes. He said, he even taught him this rug. He taught him what this rug is. Now, rugs were not in existence at the time of Adam, alayhi salam. There were no rugs at the time of Adam. Rugs came much later. But Allah taught Adam what is a rug, what is things, which means he taught him many things of the future, of the unseen. He had this knowledge. Allah says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught him everything. This means that Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, in this hadith, which is narrated in Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he inherits the knowledge of Adam, which means he has the knowledge of the all names. al asma kullaha. He has the knowledge of things that we never th think about. We never understand. Things we did not discover until recently or relatively recently. For example, one of these things. If you remember a little while back, I spoke of the person who discovered that the earth rotates around itself. You remember who was that physicist? Yeah, Galileo. Galileo, in the year 1600 something, so in the 1600s, he discovered that the earth is not at the center of the universe and everything goes around it. In fact, no, it actually rotates. The earth is not stationary, it's mobile, it rotates around itself. And it also rotates around the sun. And this was a major discovery at the time for which he was punished. He was punished for this discovery. Now let's look at Nahjul Balagha. 
Nahjul Balagha, Amir al Mu'minin, Salam Allah alayhi states the following, and I will translate, inshallah. Again, I will paraphrase, I'll translate the, mean, the meaning, not the words. He says, فَسَكَنَتْ عَلَىٰ حَرَكَتِهَا مِنْ أَنْ تَمِيدَ بِأَهْلِهَا أَوْ تَزُولَ عَمَّ وَاضِعِهَا رُغْمَ أَنَّهَا مُتَحَرِّكَ You know, amazing. He says, what he's saying, he says, the earth, even though it is moving, he says, رُغْمَ أَنَّهَا مُتَحَرِّكَ Although the earth is moving, he states, the earth is moving, yet... We don't feel its rotation. We don't feel its movement. We're standing here. We don't feel the earth moving underneath us. Nor is it taking us with it. For example, sometimes if you sit in some of these swings, you know, as the swing rotates, you rotate with it. It moves you. He says, we don't feel this movement. Yet it is moving. Nor is it shaking us like a swing, for example even though it is moving. So Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam 1400 years ago stated that the earth is moving. But unfortunately, there were no scientists who could go into his words and try to understand them. What is Amir al-Mu'mini saying? Nahj al has so much about economics, how people should lead their lives from the economics perspective. How to solve the world's economical problems. You know, I said one day, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, who won the Nobel Prize for Peace for the issue of microcredit, you know, for establishing the microcredit system in Bangladesh. He states in one of his books that 94% of the world's wealth is in the hands of 40%. 94% of the world's wealth is in the hands of 40%. The remaining 6% is divided on the 60%. So the problems we see in the economics in the world today, the crisis we see in Africa and some parts of Asia and other parts of the world is not because Allah did not create enough wealth for people. There is enough. The problem is the lack of distribution of this wealth. That is the problem. We cannot say that Allah, Ya Allah, you created people, you did not give them enough. He gave enough. There is enough for everybody. You have a pie, but what, what, what would you do when 94 people or 94 slices of the pie are given to 40 people and they tell the other 60, these six remaining slices, you have to divide them, you have to share them. Well, obviously there will be a problem here. That is what is discovered by Dr. Muhammad Yunus. You know, he's a, a professor of economics in this day and age. You, know, you can read his books. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam, 1400 years ago. He states in the hadith, he says, مَا جَاعَ فَقِيرٌ إِلَّا بِمَا مُتِّعَ بِهِ غَنِي there is no person who is poor and the reason of his poverty is because there is a rich person who is enjoying his share of the wealth. There is a rich person enjoying the share of the wealth of the poor. If people would spread their wealth, we would not have a crisis in the world today. There would not be a single poor person. And he states, مَا رَأَيْتُ نِعْمَةً مَوْفُورَ إِلَّا وَإِلَى جَانِبِهَا حَقٌ مُضَيَّعٌ I did not see a ni'mah, a blessed, in one end, except that I saw on the other end that somebody is also deprived. This person has so much, he doesn't share. And as a consequence of him not sharing, there is a person who is deprived. People in economics have written about this today. You know, in this century, just a few years ago. Amir al stated this 1400 years ago. The ilm of Amir al alayhi salam and the knowledge, according to the hadith, is the ilm of Adam. One day, a group of Jews come to the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And they said, we have some questions that cannot be answered except by a prophet 
or a true successor of a prophet, a divine successor of the prophet. This was, of course, after the prophet's death. They came, they asked around, who's the Khalifa? They said, so-and-so is the Khalifa. They came to the Khalifa. They asked him the questions he couldn't answer. So they said, what is this religion? You know, is this your Khalifa? Then Amir al-Mu'mini came. And they told him, Ya Amir al muminin we have some people here who have some questions. He said, come and ask me. They said, we asked you Khalifa already. He said, no, ask me. They said, we have some questions that cannot be answered by anyone except a prophet or a true successor to a prophet. He said, ask me. They said, can you tell us about a piece of land that never saw the sun except once in its lifetime and it will never see the sun again? He said, yes, that is the land of the Red Sea. When Musa السلام, parted the sea, when the sea parted, that land saw the sun for that one time and it will never see the sun again. That's it. Subhanallah. You know, it's really subhanallah. Where did that come from? <laughs> Allah, he's a Sayyid too, so it's a blessing. It adds na'mah there, barakah. Allah subhanallah. This is a salawat of people who are tired. Today is the wilad of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi They said, can you tell us about a grave that is moving, a mobile grave? He said, yes, that was the whale that ate Yunus alayhi salam. That whale, Allah says in the Quran that if Yunus was not among the musabbihin, that if he had not done tasbih, subhanaka la ilaha illa ant, inni kuntu min al-zalimin, fastajabna nahu wa najjaynahu min al-gham. If he had not said this tasbih, if he had not done this dua, this prayer, Allah states in the Quran he would have remained in him this whale until the day of judgment. This khalas would have become his grave. But because of his tasbih, Allah saved him. So he said, that grave is a, is a mobile, that uh, whale is a mobile grave. It's a moving grave. Could, it would have been the grave of Yunus, alayhi salam. They said, can you tell us about five that came into the, the world without a mother? No mother. He said, Adam, alayhi salam. One. Two. Hawa, alayhi salam. Three, the sheep that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented to Ibrahim to sacrifice instead of Ismail alayhi salam. That sheep came from Allah, didn't come from a mother. Four, the camel of Salih alayhi salam. That camel did not come from a mother. And five, it is what? The snake of Musa alayhi salam. The snake of Musa didn't come from a mother. And some say another hadith as well. He added a sixth one referring to the six, not five. And that is Iblis. Iblis also did not have a mother as well. But nonetheless, they said, tell us what is the meaning of number one? He replied, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah is one. They said, what is the meaning of number two? Define two. He said, Adam and Hawa, without whom there would be no humanity. They are the fathers of the humanity. Or the father and the mother of the humanity. They said, what is the meaning of number three? He said, these are the three close angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibra'il, Mikail, and Israfil. So those three angels are the close angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have a higher rank among the angels. Those are the three. They said, what is the meaning of four? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent four holy books. At-Tawrat, Wal-Injil, Wal-Zabur, Wal-Quran. That's four. 
He said, what is the meaning of number five? He said, there are five times of the salat. There are five times of the daily prayers. They said, what is the meaning of number six? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in six days. In six days. في ستة أيام or six stages, depending on how you translate or how you interpret the ayah. They said, what is the meaning of number seven? He said, وَجَعَلْنَا فَوْقَهُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا خَلَقْنَا فَوْقَهُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا That we created different verses in the Quran. They say that we created seven skies, that there are seven skies. They said, what is the meaning of number eight? قَالُوا وَيَحْمِلُونَ عَرْشَ رَبِّهِمْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ That eight angels would carry the commands of Allah. Or the ayah says the throne of Allah. But it's the command of Allah on the day of judgment. Eight. They said, what is the meaning of number nine? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salam nine signs. Tis'a ayat. According to the Quran. Nine signs. They said, what is the meaning of ten? He said, these were the 10 extra days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Musa remain in addition to the 30 days that he was promised. وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ 10 more days were added. These are the days. They said, what about 11? He said, these were the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. And 12, he said, these were the number of tribes in the children of Israel and they are the number of the successors of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They asked him, they said, who are you? Qala ana Ali ibn Abi Talib. And I am the one who is mentioned in your books as Ilya. That is me. They said, ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Wa anna ka bil haqqi wa siyu Rasulullah. That indeed you are a successor of the Prophet. That is the ilm of Amir al muminin salam Allahi alayhi. He had knowledge of things that were discovered centuries later. He had knowledge of understanding and answering questions where people did not answer or were unable to answer. That is the ilm of Adam. Then, he says, وَإِلَىٰ نُوحٍ فِي فِهْمِهِ Nuh and his understanding. When Nuh السلام, told his people that come to my ship, there will be no save, no safety other than this ship. He understood what the problem is, what they will be facing, what the consequences of their actions will be. But then I will move on to the next one. وَإِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي خُلُقِهِ And Ibrahim and his manners. In another hadith or another version of the hadith, it said Ibrahim and his forbearance, hilm. Because there is an ayah in the Quran that says, Inna Ibrahim akana awahan halima. Ibrahim was forbearing. He had forbearance. He had hilm. He had hilm. He would not get angry. He would control himself. This is among the characteristics of the prophets. That they don't get angry except for the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Amir al muminin had that characteristic. Where else would you find somebody who would win a battle against his enemies? And then he lets them go. And says, go. Where do we find this in the history? Other than with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he forgave the people of Quraysh and Amir al muminin when he forgave the people of Jamal. Where else do you find this? And of course, in his line, when Imam Hussein alayhi salam gave water to his enemies. They did not have water when they met him the first time. Hur, when he came with his men, they did not have enough water. They ran out of water. Imam Hussein gave them water. He gave them water. This, this is the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt, wasalam, brothers and sisters. The hilm. One of the problems we have in the society today is the lack of forbearance. It's getting angry, anger management. You know, they have anger management clinics. Ways of dealing with anger. Because people lose their anger. You hear there sometimes of road rage. 
you know, they say there is road rage problem. Interesting statistics about that, you know. They say they find that there's so many accidents that happen because of road rage. That's anger. Problem of anger. Take a look at even the families. Why do we have divorces in the society? Because there is no forgiveness sometimes. There's no forgiveness. The husband does not forgive the wife. The wife does not forgive the husband. When in fact the hadith states, if a husband has patience with his wife, even if she was ill-mannered, she was bad-mannered, he'll get the thawab of Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam for his patience. And if a woman has the patience with her husband, even if he's ill-mannered, she'll get the thawab of Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun. That's how much thawab. And Allah tells us in the Quran that she will get Jannah. Her reward is Jannah. A son, unfortunately, yells at the father or the, the, the mother, gets in an argument with them. Or the parents argue with the children and get in a fight with the children. Two brothers fight with each other. And subhanAllah, sometimes when this happens, it's as if shaitan, in fact, the hadith says, shaitan, one day Iblis met with Musa alayhi salam. And he said, Ya Musa, let me give you some advice. He said, when you become angry, I take control over you. You don't control yourself anymore. I'm, I become the one in charge. That's why in the ahadith, we are told that when you become angry, if you're standing, sit down. If you're sitting, stand up. If you become angry at your brother or your sister, blood brother or blood sister, somebody who's blood relation and is mahram, they say, touch him, hold him, hold on to him. There are hadith ways. Recite verses of the Quran. Recite the du'as. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بالله أن يحضرون إن الله سميع بصير أو سميع عليم. This is a dua is recited every day and every night. You can find it in Mufatih al-Jinan. Problem is in the society we don't have this. And this causes problems in the society. People don't have the patience, the hilm. Amir al-Mu'mineen had this patience. One day he saw a maid crying. A maid was crying on the street. He came to her, he said, what is the matter? Why are you crying? She said, my masters gave me money and they told me to go buy some dates. I went and I bought the dates. I came, I brought it home. They don't like it. They said, we don't like these dates. Go return them back, get a refund. You know. They went back, but apparently this guy had a sign, no exchange, you know, sorry, no refund, no exchange. He said, you bought it, خلاص. I'm not going to refund it to you. So she said, I don't know what to do now. I'm afraid if I go back to my masters, they will hurt me. They will bother me. They will make it my fault. And this man is not taking the dates back. He says, come with me. He goes to the date owner. He says, can you please return this date for this lady? She is a servant. It is not her choice. She bought these dates. Her masters don't want these dates. So why don't you take it back? It is said in the hadith, the man, of course, he didn't recognize Amir al-Mu'mineen He came and he pushed Amir al-Mu'mineen. He pushed him. He gave him a push. This was during the Khilafah of Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he was the Khalifa. People then told him, what have you done? Do you know who this man is? He is the head of the state. He's the Khalifa. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen. It is said the man then his face turned yellow and he started taking deep breath. <laughs> you know, he, he was about to faint. Who did I mess with? And then he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, please forgive me. He said, I will forgive you as long as you make people happy with your manners. You have to improve your akhlaq, your manners with people. I will forgive you. I don't have an issue. When in fact, Amir al muminin said in the hadith that when he used to grab somebody from his arm or from his chest, 
if he would grab onto somebody, that person would not breathe anymore. He would not be able to breathe with his grip. That was the grip of Amir al-Mu'minin sallallahu alayhi when he grabbed somebody. Yet you have somebody who comes and pushes him, yet he's patient, patient. It's okay. He doesn't know what he's doing. Where is our akhlaq from the akhlaq of Amir al-Mu'minin? Do we have this in the society? Amongst each other, amongst our brothers, our sisters, our families, our children, our spouses. On the contrary, you have people who add fuel sometimes to the fire. You see people igniting, yeah, go, go, punch him. You know, mashallah, do this, do. And then he says, and whomever wants to look at Musa and his munajat. It is said in the hadith that Allah told Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, do you know why I chose you among all my servants to be my prophet? He said, no, Ya Allah, why? He said, because you, use, you do a lot of sujood in the sand for me. You wipe your face in the sand for me. And for this reason, I chose you as a prophet of, for me. And Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi, one day Abu Darda found in Nahj al balagha he says, I was in the desert in the middle of the night. I heard a voice of somebody doing munajat, remembering Allah. He was there, I approached him. I saw it was Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam on the sand, in the desert, weeping, crying, until he fainted. Then he said, I ran to the house of Amir al Mu'mineen. I knocked at the door in Medina, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, she opened the door. She said, who's coming at this time of the night? I told her, O oh daughter of Rasulullah, I am Abu Darda. She said, what brings you at this time of the night, ya Abu Darda? He said, I think Ali has died. She said, why? He said, this is what happened. He fainted. I went to him. I shook him. I tried to wake him up. He would not move like a piece of wood. Still nothing. She said, Ya Abad Darda, he's not dead. Innaha al ghashya allati ta'tari min khashyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what happens to him when he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does the munajat of Allah. So Ya Ali takes some water and put it on his face and he'll wake up. So Abu Darda said, I couldn't believe it. I took some water, I put it on his face, he woke up. And then he told him, Ya Amir al mumini why do you do this to yourself? He said, Ya Abad Darda, and who will be there for me on the day when nothing will be able to help us except our deeds? On that day, who's going to help me? Shouldn't I be preparing for that day? Brothers and sisters, if we take a look at the ibadah of Amir al mumineen and his connection with Allah, where he seeks the pleasure of Allah, not his pleasure, Sometimes when it comes his pleasure and the pleasure of Allah, he chooses the pleasure of Allah, even though that is painful to him. When they took the Khilafah away from him, the Khilafah was taken away from Amir al muminin Read Nahj al He says, I had the patience. I had to wait. I had to have the patience. But what kind of a patience? The patience of a person... صبرت وفي العين قذا وفي الحلق شجا أرى تراثي نهبا. I had the patience like a person who has a bone stuck in his throat, who has something bothering him in his eyes and itching from it. That is the patience. But since this is the pleasure of Allah, I prefer the pleasure of Allah over my pleasure. He went with the pleasure of Allah. If this is the akhlaq and the ibadah of Amir, if people actually would worship Allah the fraction of the worship of Amir al-Mu'mini, we would not have the problems in the world today. If people can realize that we have to put Allah's pleasure first, not my pleasure first. I have to be fair with people, even though that goes against my interest. But since that is where Allah's pleasure is, that's what I have to do. <coughs> we would not have the problems today. Unfortunately, one of the problems in today's world is everybody says, it's me and me only. I care about myself, not others. 
Other people are suffering, I don't care. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Other people are going through problems, even though I can help them, why should I help them? Allah will take care of them. That is our problem today. And this is the ibadah of Amir al Mu'mineen. It is said that one day Imam al Baqir alayhi salam went to Allah sallallahu alayhi wa entered on the on his father Imam al Sajjad. He came to see his father, and Imam al Sajjad had turned pale from the ibadah. From the ibadah. Then, in a long story, just to make it short, he, Imam al Sajjad told Imam al Baqir, he said, Ya Bunay, give me the books or the, the sahifa of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You know, the du'as of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the ibadah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, I gave it to my father. He looked at it. Imam al-Sajjad, who is known as Zain al-Abideen. Okay. He said he looked at the ibadah of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Then he put aside, he put these papers aside. And he said, Man yaqwa ala ibadati Ali ibn Abi Talib. Who can do the ibadah of Ali ibn Abi Talib? And this is Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam saying this. Who can do the ibadah of Ali ibn Abi Talib? And mind you, Ali ibn Abi Talib was the khalifa of the Muslims. Yet, he still had the time and find the time to help people. This lady who was a maid, Imam Ali had a busy khilafah, not, was not an easy khilafah. With all these people rising against him, with all these wars, with all these difficulties, with all that corruption, yet he would find time to go and help people and fulfill their hajat and their duties. Today we have a problem of time management. Everything, we're busy, 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 busy. That's us. Amir al-Mu'mineen was not any less busy than us, yet he still had the time to help people, to go look after them. What about us? And then, to conclude, we have the ibadah of, or the perfection of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, is embodied in Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So this hadith, alone tells us what a great personality we have brothers and sisters before us but unfortunately we haven't done justice to Ali ibn Abi Talib we claim to be his Shia and his followers yet we do not follow his example we say we are the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib but we tell him we turn to him and we tell him Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, you did not turn the request of your enemies when they requested you for forgiveness. Your enemies, you did not turn them away. You granted them forgiveness. You granted them amnesty. We are here your lovers, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. Now, if we don't qualify to be your Shia, at the very least, we are your lovers. And we are here seeking your forgiveness. We are here seeking your amnesty. We are here seeking your shafa'a. We are here seeking to be among your Shia. We are not worthy, but your manners and your akhlaq is worthy of accepting us. Especially on this day of mercy, the 13th day of Rajab, where people have come to celebrate your wilada, we say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, have mercy upon us at the time when there will be no mercy other than the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have mercy upon us at the time when we are in our graves with no one to help us other than Ahlul Bayt and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Bayt by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the time of Mahshar and the day of judgment when there is nobody to help us other than the help of Allah through Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. So Mu'mineen and Mu'minat let us try to learn more about Ali ibn Abi Talib, the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the forbearance of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the patience of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the ibadah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And let's try to implement that in our lives and the lives of our children, such that, inshallah, we would achieve his shafa'a in dunya, in the qabr, and in the akhirah, inshallah. Raise your hands for the dua. On this holy day, at this holy time, in this holy place, being the guest of this holy man, the dua is accepted. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma yujibul mad.
مضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء Everybody together أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم بأمير المؤمنين اقض حوائج المؤمنين يا الله إلهي بأمير المؤمنين شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله على الخصوص من أوصونا بالدعاء اللهم اقض حوائجهم شافي مرضاهم يسر أمورهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إلهي بأمير المؤمنين اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله إلهي بأمير المؤمنين اجعلنا من شيعة أمير المؤمنين يا الله إلهي بأمير المؤمنين انصر شيعة أمير المؤمنين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا الله إلهي بأمير المؤمنين اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربيان صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم بأمير المؤمنين عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه اللهم كن لوليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وقائدا ونا هو دليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه إلهي بأمير المؤمنين ارزقنا زيارة أمير المؤمنين عاجلا يا الله وشفاعة أمير المؤمنين في الدنيا وفي القبر وفي الآخرة يا الله إلهي نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة إلا ما رزقتنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح موات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات